the Easter story is a tale that begins a very long time before the birth of Jesus, when God promises his people a Messiah, a Savior, who will come to them to rescue them. With the coming of Christ at Christmas, a new chapter of that story begins, and through Jesus' life, through his teaching and ministry, that tale takes and makes so many unforeseen twists and turns. Today, we hear about the beginning of the end, which then leads on to the end of all endings. So let us worship God. Creator God, unsettle us and move and inspire us as we follow again the story of your Son. Help us to listen with fresh ears to all that he faced, knowing it was love that gave him the courage to do everything he did. And thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you that that love came from you. We cannot imagine how hard it must have been to offer your son for the sake of a world that rejected him and rejects him still. Thank you for not giving up on us, Lord God. Thank you for continuing to stand by us, even when we go on hurting and abusing you, and even when we continue to betray your son, your beloved. Do now, we pray, as you did on that first Easter day, and carry the darkness we create, transforming it into light, the light of, of hope and love and peace. Then help us, we pray, to live in that light. These things we ask, creator of all, in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught his friends when they pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
The Sovereign Lord has taught me what to say so that I can strengthen the weary. Every morning he makes me eager to hear what he's going to teach me. The Lord has given me understanding and I have not rebelled or turned away from him. I bared my back to those who beat me. I did not stop them when they insulted me, when they pulled out the hairs of my beard and spit in my face. But their insults cannot hurt me because the Sovereign Lord gives me help. I brace myself to endure them. I know that I will not be disgraced, for God is near, and he will prove me innocent. Does anyone be dare to bring charges against me? Let us go to court together. Let him bring his accusations. The Sovereign Lord himself defends me. Who then can prove me guilty? The next day, the large crowd that had come to the Passover festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Praise God! God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord! God bless the King of Israel! Jesus found a donkey and rode on it, just as the scripture says. Do not be afraid, city of Zion. Here comes your king, riding on a young donkey. His disciples did not understand this at the time, but when Jesus had been raised to glory, they remembered that the scripture said this about him and that they had done this for him. What must it have been like, Lord, to be amongst that crowd on your entry to Jerusalem? Such a noise from people of all ages. Could you make out what they were saying, I wonder? The shouting, well, that had to have grown louder and louder as more and more joined the thronging mass, the nearer that you got to the city. And people would have been carried along in the excitement of the moment, just as happens in football crowds these days. But, but what about all those green palm branches, Lord? You know, I, I know it's what people did back then in that part of the world, but it, isn't it a shame that those branches were stripped off the trees, Lord, just to be waved? Poor trees. And the donkey. I don't really know very much about donkeys, but they're not very big, are they? Are grown men meant to ride them? I'm really glad, though, that there were so many who took off their cloaks to carpet the road. It would have been so much softer for tired and weary hooves. Lord, Lord, when I close my eyes and try to imagine the scene, all I can think of is the crush of people there must have been and the noise, the hosannas, the loud hosannas. That must have unnerved that poor wee donkey as she trudged on through the crowd with you on her back. Then there were the children, lots of them, playing and laughing, on top of all that singing and shouting that was going on. It sounds like it might have been a bit of a party atmosphere. Would that be right, Lord? Is that how it was? I'm guessing there were lots of high spirits that day, even amongst your closest friends. They must have been so happy, Lord, to see people praising you. They had to have had a big smile on their lips and a wee spring in their step, because it must have felt like a dream come true for them, everyone wanting a piece of you, their teacher. Is that how you felt, though, Lord? Happy? Did you enjoy the praises being directed your way? Or, or did the shouts, I wonder, start to send shivers down your spine? Did the words being yelled and sung merge into a garbled, ugly noise that felt like a frightening premonition of things to come? It wouldn't, Lord, be too long before, with even louder voices and with crystal clarity, people would change their tune and shout very different words at you. In just a few days, the trees would not be the only ones cruelly stripped. You would be stripped of everything, your clothes, your dignity, your life. The donkey you rode 
The donkey had nowhere near as heavy a burden to bear as you did, Lord. And your cloak, your cloak didn't become a carpet on the road. Instead, it was bid for in a game of dice. But while chance may have decided who won your robe, it was deliberate choice that won your life and that won our lives too. You, Lord, you chose this road. You chose to live and you chose to die in order to rise again. And you did that, Lord, so that we too might choose Choose to join you on that incredible journey into life everlasting. Help us, Lord Jesus, to dare to trust in you and in your love and in your promises. Help us to recognize in your quiet riding on a donkey through a noisy crowd. Help us to recognize the King who came to save us, our servant king. The donkey was deliberate. 
Jesus wanted people to realize he was, as many of them suspected he was, he was the long-awaited Messiah. And the donkey was to bring to people's minds the ancient words from one of the prophets who talked of their king coming to them riding on a donkey. Only, only Jesus knew too what the people expected from that king. And that expectation was nothing like the plans that God had in mind for Jesus. The palm branches, the cloaks, the singing, all these things were the crowd's way of telling Jesus that they were behind him, if, that is, if Jesus was about to lead a, a rebellion, an uprising. Just say the word, Jesus, and we'll be there. Just say the word and we'll storm the Roman authorities and be a people set free again. But then look at what happens next. Three of the four Gospels have Jesus riding into Ju Jerusalem and then going straight to the temple. But he goes into the temple not to stir people up to find the courage to band together to overthrow the Romans. Jesus goes into the temple and he turns over the tables of the money changers and those who are selling the animals and birds for sacrifice. This is not Jesus putting the Romans in their place. This is him saying to his own people, look, you need to get your act together. And that was not what people expected. Neither was it what they wanted. Cue a sense of utter outrage. But why did Jesus do that? Now I confess, I've always thought that Jesus did what he did because he knew the stallholders and the moneylenders were exploiting people. I always thought Jesus went so mad because the poor, poorest were being ripped off in the very place where they should have been helped and where they should have been treated with respect. I'm pretty sure that probably formed part of the reason that Jesus went on the rampage, but I'm not at all sure there wasn't more to it than that. I wonder if Jesus was not also more than just a little bit frustrated with all the coziness of the Passover celebrations. This was a time when families and friends met up same time, same place, every year, year after year after year. Everyone looked forward to being able to get together. It was all about catching up, eating together, having fun. And it was all about forgetting too, for a few days at least, about life out there. It was where, as God's people, God's people could be together and remember better days when God had made them great. This was a time for familiar age-old rituals in the temple and round the table, and never mind anybody else. This was time for closing ranks, for doing what people of faith did. And you were either in on that faith or you were outside of it. No room was made for those who didn't know what the celebrations were about. I wonder if Jesus, when he looked around him in the temple that day, I wonder if he felt angry at the sight of people so comfortable in their own ways and their own traditions that their faith no longer challenged them to think beyond them and their own, to think of others. Could Jesus have been annoyed at the insular way people were keeping God to, them to themselves instead of sharing the goodness of God far and wide? Jesus, as his arrival on the donkey suggests, Jesus was a very different kind of a Messiah from the one so many around him were expecting. He was a king but not the sort of king who wanted to lead his people into battle. Instead, he was a king ready to roll up his sleeves and to get his hands dirty so that everyone might know they had a place, not just in God's kingdom, but in God's heart. Jesus was a saviour who didn't care about people's backgrounds. 
He simply wanted women, children, men to know that they were and are loved, whatever. A person's nationality, their accent, their heritage, none of that mattered to Jesus. People's faults and failings, their abilities or their disabilities, those didn't matter and neither did their job or their age or how well or sick they were. This Messiah, this peaceable donkey riding son of David had come and comes still with one task in mind and that is to seek and to save God's people, all of them. Whoever they are, wherever they are. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, for having such love for us that you were willing to come and live and then give up your own life for our sakes, we thank you. For finding the courage to face the journey to the cross and then the cross itself. And above all, for the life you have won for us through your death. Again, we say thank you. You, Lord Jesus, paid a price we could never deserve. And you did so deliberately 
unwillingly, thinking nothing of your own needs. For the times we take your love for granted, for the times we push you and what you did and do aside, we're truly sorry. We ask that as we follow you again through the events of Easter, that you will set our tongues, lips and hearts free to praise you, so that we may respond to your love in love and live pointing to you. We bring you those whom you are already caring for. We pray for those worrying and for those who are troubled. We think of those who are ill and of those who live with memories that have scarred them. Help each one, Lord Jesus, to know that you are there for them, to hold them and to be the shoulder they need to lean on. And help us, we pray, to be sensitive to the pain and to the sadness others live with, giving us ears, listening ears and open hearts. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the hurt and the brokenness of this world. He came to bring peace. We need that healing and peace now more than ever. We think of the land you walked and taught in and of the lives of the too many there defined by violence. We pray for peace wherever in the world conflict and war rage. We think of Ukraine, South Sudan, of Myanmar. We think too of communities divided and of families we pray for all children everywhere, that they may be able to grow up free from hatred and suspicion and fear. Let love be the rule. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. You came, Lord, and heaven touched this earth. Come again and touch our community, our nation and our world. So may we dare to choose life as you did and choose too to live it with you. All these prayers we offer in your name, Lord, and for your sake. Amen.